Welcome to Passion for Sound, the channel dedicated to thorough and honest reviews of headphones, earphones, DACs, headphone amps, other components and accessories. Basically everything audio related except power amps and passive speakers. My name's Lachlan and my goal is to explore and discuss all kinds of audio topics, even the controversial ones, to help us all find more enjoyment from music. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. And today, another Hi-Fi-Man headphone on the channel. I seem to be working my way through their range and I'm very grateful to hi fi for helping me do just that. I seem to be consistently impressed with the offerings from hi fi and they're rapidly becoming one of my go-to recommendations of headphone brands. And that makes this particular headphone particularly interesting. What I have here today is the HE400 SE. So this is not a special edition so much as the Stealth Edition. The reason it's called the Stealth Edition is because it uses hi fi and Stealth Magnet Design. That's a technology that's trickled all the way down from the very top of their range with headphones like the HE1000 and the Susvara using it. I'll talk a bit more about what it means shortly, but the key thing is this is the cheapest hi fi and planar magnetic headphone I think they've ever released. And at just 149 US dollars, it's pretty crazy that you can pick up a full-sized headphone using quality planar magnetic drivers at such a crazy price. So come with me now as we try to find out whether it's just a cost-cutting measure or if it's actually an improved headphone compared to the previous HE400i 2020 model and also where it sits in the scheme of things sound-wise in hi fi range. Before I get into today's review, I'd like to talk to you about a giveaway I've got going on. What I've got here is a pair of Samsung Buds Live wireless earbuds, and these are going to be given away to a viewer and subscriber to the channel very soon. If you'd like a chance to win the Samsung Buds Live, it's very simple. All you need to do is make sure you subscribe and share with me your idea for a hoodie or t-shirt design that could be merchandise on the channel. You might have noticed in recent reviews, I've been wearing things like I am today. This is the Peace, Love and Music hoodie. So I've got a number of designs available now, but I'm always looking to add something new and fun and different. So if you've got an idea, please let me know in the comments below. It'll automatically put you in the draw to win the Samsung Buds Live. What I'll also do, of course, is provide the winner with a t-shirt or hoodie with their idea on it. So if that sounds good to you, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button right now and have a think and leave a comment about an idea that you think would make for a good hoodie or t-shirt. I should add, the ideas do need to be family friendly, so nothing that's abusive, disrespectful or rude, but anything else goes as long as it's audio or sound related. I look forward to seeing your entries and I look forward to announcing the winner in just a couple of weeks. For now though, let's get on with the review. I've already mentioned that the HE400 SE is 149 US dollars. That converts to about 200 Australian dollars, although it's probably going to cost a little bit more than that by the time there's import duties and shipping and stuff added on. Either way, it's still a very, very affordable headphone. And so, of course, my biggest question was, is it a crappy cost-cutting exercise or is it actually improving the quality of the product and reducing the price at the same time? Because sometimes that happens, but not that often. Before I start talking about the build quality, the accessories, all that sort of stuff, I just want to mention the specs of the HE400 SE. This is a 25 ohm, 91 decibel sensitivity headphone and that makes it not particularly easy to drive. So it's not really a headphone I would recommend for most portable setups. It's much more of a desktop style headphone. To put that into context, the HE400 SE would require 795 milliwatts, so just a little bit less than one watt, to get to 120 decibels. Now I use 120 decibels as kind of my reference point when I'm working out these figures because it allows you to have plenty of headroom when you're using it with say a, a lower recording level to start with if you've got a really quiet track and you need to turn it up more 
Or if you're needing to add a Q to improve the sound of your tastes, it allows enough power for the amp to add the extra volume in certain frequency ranges as you might choose in your EQ. 120 decibels is way louder than anybody should ever be listening and it's at the level that it's going to start causing damage. Most listening should be done at around about the high 70s through to mid 80 decibels if you want to preserve your hearing. At that sort of level, these only need one or two milliwatts, so there's really not a huge issue in terms of getting normal listening levels with the HE400SE, but it does mean there may not be a huge amount of headroom on portable devices. For example, I tried it with the Airman Eagle just as a starting point test, and it was requiring about 85% volume out of the Airman Eagle coming from my smartphone. That means there's really not enough room for a really quiet track or EQ boosting of things like the bass. If you started to do that, you're probably going to end up clipping the device and that's going to lead to distortion and bad sound. So think of these more as a desktop headphone or they'd be fine with the more powerful digital audio players on the market like say the Fio M11s or some of the Shanling players, my Abasso DX300 would handle them fine. So all those sorts of players will be fine, but the little dongle style DACs are likely to struggle with the HE400SE. So with that context taken care of, let's now talk about the features, the design, the functionality, etc. The first thing we might start with is the headphone itself. This is pretty much identical to the HE400 2020 edition. They are essentially the same exact headphone, one in a silver colorway, the other one in a black colorway. The HE400 had a sort of satiny finish on the cups, whereas they've gone for more of a gloss finish on the SE. We've also got the metal colored gimbals, the silver gimbals versus the black, but other than that, everything's basically the same. Same headband, same mechanisms, same 3.5 mil attachments on the bottom. They're really identical headphones. And so with that in mind, Everything I've spoken about before on the channel in terms of the fact that they're comfortable, they fit well, for the price you're paying, I think they're pretty well made. All of that stays true with the HE400SE. For those that haven't watched my other reviews of that, I've pretty much just summed it up. These are a well-designed, well-made headphone, particularly at the price point. You're getting some nice comfortable pads with a slight angle to them to help with the sound staging and the positioning of the driver. You've got a good notchy adjustment system, decent padding on the headband, although that's probably one weak point with these is I do find they get a little bit uncomfortable on top of the head after extended listening. But beyond that, there's really nothing to complain about. They're pretty light for a planar magnetic, and they're very comfortable in general terms, except for that little bit of hotspot on the top of the head. I like the fact that all hi fi are now using this 3.5mm connector as well, because that means if you've invested in a better quality cable for your hi fi maybe you've got multiple sets, or maybe you bought the cable for the first set that you bought, that same cable is going to work across all of the current models, and I really like that fact. Speaking of cables, that's where things get a bit icky with the HE400SE. This cable could be one of the worst cables I've ever interacted with, and that's saying something because some of the other hi fi cables have been equally dreadful. This cable is a silver plated copper I believe, but what makes it a problem is that as you can see here, it holds its shape in a really bad way, and it's also a pretty short cable in the scheme of things. I don't know if you can tell here, but it wants to kink, it wants to buckle, it's just a horrible, horrible cable to work with. I complained recently about the Ananda cable not feeling good, but at least it doesn't kink and want to fold up on itself the way this one does. This takes it to a whole nother level. Not only is it unenjoyable to interact with physically, but it's also a really nasty cable to use from a general ergonomics point of view. The length is a bit of a problem if you're in a desktop system like me. Once I plug into my TT2, Behind me here, I don't have much room to move. The cable doesn't have any space to drop off the desk. It's got to come across where my mouse or my graphics tablet is, and then also across my keyboard before it comes up to my earphones. So it's really, in my opinion, a dreadful, dreadful cable. Thankfully, as I said before, it uses the same connectors as all the other hi fi headphones, and that's allowed me to go out and get myself a much nicer cable, courtesy of Heart Audio Cables. I'll be reviewing that cable in the future, but it is something with the HE400SE that I would factor in getting yourself a better cable if you don't already have one. It's going to be a good investment because if you choose to sell the HE400SEs and upgrade to a different hi fi headphone in the future, the same cable is going to stay with you. Of course, you can use the SE with this cable. The sound out of it is just fine, but it's just a horrible, horrible cable to interact with. For those of you interested in the Heart Audio cable, this is what it looks like here. 
And as a contrast, you can immediately see it sits beautifully, it drapes nicely, it's got a lovely cloth sheathing to it. They've got this brilliant system here where you can actually disconnect the final end piece that goes into your amplifier and choose different connectors to suit. So you could get 4.4 mil, you can get XLR, and of course 3.5 mil with a 6.3 mil adapter. So it's a fantastic system that allows lots of versatility. I'll be doing a full review of this in the future, so make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see my review of the Heart Audio cables. But I wanted to mention it for now because much of my listening has been done using the Heart Audio cable with the 400SE because it just made it much more enjoyable. So let's talk now about sound quality. Because other than the cable and the headphones, that's all there is to know about the HE400SE, and therefore it's all going to come down to how it sounds. As usual, I'll start talking about the headphone itself in isolation, but then provide some comparisons that I think you'll find relevant and useful. My first impression of the HE400SE is that it's got overall a pretty good sound. It can get just a little bit edgy or peaky on poorer tracks, but it's not too bad, particularly at the price you pay. That slight peakiness and the general tuning of the headphone does mean that there can be a slight imbalance in the tonality through the treble and the mids, but it's very, very mild and it only snuck up on certain tracks. So it's not something that would be a reason not to buy the SE, but it is a reason why you might choose to spend more on a different headphone. What I mean by that is that as good as the SE are, and as I'm going to go on to explain, I think they're fantastic. As good as these are, they're not the best headphone on the planet. There's a reason they only cost $149 US dollars. And so it's important to see these in the context of where they're meant to sit. For $149 US dollars, they are absolutely fantastic. But for a little bit more money, you do get better sound. So I just wanted to raise that early and get that context in place. One of the things that I find impressive about the SE is that it's improved the bass response from the HE400i. That to me was a bit of a shortcoming of the 400i, and I felt like it needed a bit of a cueing to get it to really come alive. With the SE, and as I'll talk about more when I get to the comparison with the 400i, with the SE, the bass extension is much better all the way down to the bottom end, and it's also generally a more linear sound. Personally, I would like just a little bit more weight in the bass from the SE, but in terms of extension and general quality, the bass is very, very good. Soundstage width from the SE is quite good, but as usual for a more budget headphone, it doesn't throw a lot of depth in the soundstage, so things are mostly within a left and right range, and they extend to just beyond or maybe level with the ears. From my experiences, that's pretty good for a budget headphone and nothing that I would complain about. The imaging from them is also quite good, but not entirely well focused at all times. Interestingly, when I switched from the horrible stock cable over to the Heart Audio cable, I did feel like the imaging improved slightly. Now the Heart Audio cable I think is a pure copper cable compared to the silver plated copper of the stock cable, and I think that's actually what's helping. By going to the Heart Audio cable, you're pulling back a little bit of treble energy by not having that silver plating in there, and that's resulting in a slightly smoother sound that also focuses the image better. So my recommendation for HE400 SE owners or buyers of the HE400 SE in the future is to maybe think about getting yourself a pure copper cable to go with the SE. I think moving away away from the silver plated copper is going to help improve the sound quality just a little bit with the SE, smooth off a couple of the edges and actually improve the imaging focus as a result. To help contextualize some of my comments on the sound, I wanted to share one particular track that I listen to. It's a bit of a go-to for me sometimes for testing out the tonal quality and timbre quality of headphones, amps, DACs and the like. And that is Mummy Can I Come Home by Keb Mo. On this track, it's a very simple arrangement of just vocals, acoustic guitar. It's very simple, but it allows you to hear if the device is representing the music the way it's meant to sound. When using this track on the HE400SE, Kebmo's voice was just a little bit drier and raspier than it should be, having heard it across all sorts of different and much more accurate systems. And I found that the plucks of the guitar strings could occasionally get just a little bit too sharp out of the SE. And that's again back to that treble peakiness that I spoke about earlier. So at this point it may sound like I'm not a huge fan of the HE400SE, but in reality I think it's absolutely fantastic at its price. 
it does have shortcomings, and I've tried to highlight those shortcomings when talking about it in isolation, so you get an expectation of what you're going to hear if you buy the SE. When you start to put it up against other headphones though, what you realize is that the limitations of the SE are much better than the limitations and shortcomings of other headphones in the same approximate price range. And that's where I say these are a brilliant budget headphone that is absolutely worth buying and one that I would highly recommend at the price. To illustrate that, let's return now to talking about the original HE400i, the 2020 model. So actually it's not the original, it's the 2020 version. The 2020 version costs 20 US dollars more than the SE here. And the only things really going for it in terms of feature differences or design differences is it does come with a much nicer cable. Of course, some of you may also prefer the color scheme. That's entirely a personal thing. So I'm not gonna make a comment on that. The sound from the HE400i 2020 is a little bit drier overall than that from the HE400 SE. And it's a bit of a double edged sword. The 400i does give slightly better sense of texture and you could say clarity from the sound, but the sound is also noticeably harsher. From a pure enjoyment perspective, I do find the SE to be a more enjoyable headphone. Another area that I think the SE has a clear edge over the 2020 or the 400i is that it also has much better bass extension. On some tracks, you're not necessarily gonna notice a huge difference in bass between these, but if you are listening to anything such as electronic music where it has got more information right down low in the bass, what you're going to find is that the 400 SE does a much better job of recreating that sound. Whereas the 400i 2020 runs out of puff and leaves things feeling a bit thin. I found the overall tonal balance from the 400 SE to also be generally better. The 400i can get just a bit nasal and dry compared to the SE and that again makes the SE the better choice in my opinion. One of the tracks I was listening to whilst testing these two was 52nd Street by Billy Joel. The opening of that track has lots of punch and drive from the piano and the drums, and the 400 SE just brought it to life in a much more realistic and engaging way, whereas the I sounded just a little bit sterile and cold and analytical. Comparing the two, the SE is the overall richer and more engaging sound, but both headphones are actually pretty analytical and pretty neutral. So it's not as though the SE version has suddenly strayed into thickness and richness and coloration. It's still very true to source, but it's doing it across all frequencies, including bass, and that allows it to have the engagement and the richness that needs to be there. So in a pure hi-fi-man versus hi-fi-man comparison, the SE is definitely the better choice, so long as you can either put up with the stock cable or you're happy to buy a different one. And so with that comparison out of the way, I thought I'd also look at another option from the hi and Stable. I don't have that option here on my desk, but it's the hi and Sundara. I wanted to test the Sundara briefly to see if it had the same tonality as the 400 SE or if it took it even a step further. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the Sundara versus the 400 SE because they're in very different price points. But for those of you that are wondering if the 400 SE is more like the 400i or more like the Sundara and if it's worth spending more on the Sundara, what I'm going to tell you is that the SE and the 400i are more alike than the SE and the Sundara. The Sundara has a richer, warmer and more engaging sound, but it's also more technically capable. There's a better sense of texture, nuance and resolution from the Sundara, even though it's also a richer, warmer sound. As good as the HE400 SE, there is still a good reason to spend more and buy the Sundara. So that's all I'm going to say about hi fi versus hi fi -man. The other headphone that I have that sits at roughly the same price as the HE400 SE is my DT880 250 ohm black version. So I think it's called Special Edition. They're not always available and it's not a an exact copy of the standard DT880. So take this a little bit with a grain of salt if you're used to the traditional DT880s. But for what it's worth, if anyone's familiar with the SE version, the black version of the DT880, comparing the 400 SE with the SE DT880, which is about 20 to 30 US dollars more, comparing the two of them, there are some very striking differences. First of all, the DT880 has a fixed cable, which is why I don't have it here on my desk. I didn't want to have to wrangle the cable. It's hanging on the wall behind me. It's also a lighter headphone because it's a dynamic driver and therefore it doesn't have all the magnets. The 400 SE is pretty light for planar, but the DT880 is still definitely the lighter headphone and therefore the more comfortable headphone for extended listening. Beyond the cable and the aesthetics and the lightness, there's also significant sonic differences between these two. 
The DT880 is more of a V-shaped type sound, whereas the HE400SE leans a bit closer to neutral. Flipping between the two, the V-shape of the DT880 means that the mids have a bit of a suck out to them. And so flipping between the two, the SE does come across just a little bit nasal at times because it's bringing some of that information back that the DT880 takes away. As to which one is better, I'm not going to try and suggest either way that one is better or worse, they're just different. What I would say is that I think the SE is closer to a true representation of the sound, but it's got its own imperfections. So I'm not going to suggest that the SE is perfect and the DT880 is flawed. They both have their own strengths and weaknesses in their tunings. For example, the DT880 produces a greater sense of spaciousness in the sound stage and also has better treble detail and a well-balanced treble emphasis in my opinion. Again, it's not perfectly realistic, but it's handled really well and doesn't get too bright. Despite the bit of bass lift in the DT880, you can also hear that the HE400SE has the better extension. It comes across as less punchy bass, but definitely a more complete bass. I think overall, if you're looking for a more accurate and natural and neutral sounding headphone, the HE400SE is definitely the one to go for. If you like the Biodynamic House sound, or if you're looking specifically for a headphone with better treble detail and treble emphasis, then the DT880 250 ohm Special Edition is probably the better choice. For me, given the savings on the HE400SE and the fact that it has a replaceable cable, thank God, that is also twin entry and therefore can be run balanced if you've got balanced amps, Given all of those factors, I would personally choose if I was just buying one or the other, I would choose the HE400SE. Overall, I think it's the better headphone in terms of tonal balance across the board. The bass extension is excellent. The comfort is good, if not quite as good as the DT880. And you can swap out the cable and run it with balanced or single in amps as you need to. So all of that brings me around to a conclusion that I think the HE400SE is a real winner. When I received these, I was worried that they were going to be a cheap, crappy version of the HE400i 2020. But actually what it is, is a product revision that's an improvement on the 2020 and happens to cost less. I just wish hi firmen would start choosing better quality cables to put with all their headphones. That's a consistent issue for me, is that all of their headphones seem to have pretty crappy cables one way or the other. And in fact, to me, the HE400i 2020 version had the best cable from an ergonomics perspective. It may not have sounded as good, I haven't compared the two, but certainly if I could choose to use one over the other, it would be the HE400i 2020 cable that I would well and truly choose over the SE cable. So if you're in the market for a budget headphone, if you're going to be driving it from something stronger than a dongle DAC, so if you're running a Tempertech Sonata HD Pro or an Eman Eagle or a Spectra X from NextDrive, any of those sorts of devices, I probably wouldn't recommend the SE. But if you're running it from any other sort of device, be it a decent digital audio player or a desktop setup, I highly recommend the HE400 SE. For the money you're paying, it is crazy that you can get the sort of quality that's available from the HE400 SE. Not that long ago, this would easily, based on performance and design and technology, this would have been a $300 US headphone. As it is, you can now pick one up for less than $150. And at that price, this is an absolute bargain. So if you're in the market, do check out the HE400SE. I'll put some links down below where you can click through, learn more, and pick them up for yourself if you want to. Don't forget that I've got the Samsung Buds Live giveaway going on. If you want to be a part of that, make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment down below with your idea for what could be my next design for a merchandise hoodie, t-shirt, etc. I'll be drawing that in a couple of weeks' time, so make sure you're subscribed so you get to see the announcement. For now, though, I'll leave you to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.